you know, guys, you know, I was just thinking about Christ Jesus. And there's an account in the Bible, right? I mean, he, he performed so many miracles, so many good accounts you can think of. Uh, the woman that touched his outer garment, his garments, right? And she was healed, that, that woman. Uh, the one that committed adultery. Her, Lazarus, of course. Feeding of thousands. You know, so many miracles you can think about and what he did. Uh, and yet, there's one miracle he does, or one account that he uh, encounters the disciples freaking out over a storm, in a storm. Fishermen, mind you. And they could not believe that this man, Jesus, who performed all these supernatural um, miracles um, some reason they were amazed that he could walk on water you know the account I'm talking about let's have a look at it together Mark 6 45 52 and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the boat and to go to the other side before him unto Bethsaida where he sent away the people straightway means immediately and notice he constrained or in other words he Import, implored him to go, 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 <laughs> go now. Day's day's done. Had a long day in the ministry. Go, you know, go back to where Bethsaida fishing village. This is where they're from, right? This uh, hometown. Go back home, and then he sent the people away. Forty-six. And when he had sent them away, he departed into mountain to pray. Typical. This is Jesus' life, right? Solitude, prayer with the Father. Uh, but he was a busy man, right? Busy on the go. But he took time out. Maybe there's a lesson for us as well. And when he came into the evening, the boat was in the midst of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And verse 48, and he saw them toiling. Notice he noticed them. He hadn't forgotten about them. He's the one, in fact, that told him to go. So it's a good le- good point there about Christ. He is he's not... Uh, unaware of what's happening notice that it says for the wind was contrary unto them and about the fourth watch of the night he came unto them walking upon the sea and would have passed them guys th- this trip was a long trip on the on water two hour uh, boat ride uh, they were in the water for hours and walking on water I don't know how far they were but uh, and he, he was already going to pass them right in verse 49 and they saw him walking upon the sea, and they, and they supposed it was a spirit and cried out. In other words, they thought it was a ghost or something, and they freaked out a little. But then they saw him and were troubled. <laughs> it's Jesus. And immediately he talked to them, and he said unto them, Now, Christ is taking the initiative here, isn't he? Sees them in trouble. He comes to them to their rescue, basically. He says, Be of good cheer. It is I... Be not afraid. Don't be afraid, guys. It's me. What's what's going on? Is everyone all right? Be happy. Be glad. 51. And he went up to them into the boat, and the wind ceased. Remember, it was ra- tempest of the sea, raging. Now it's ceased. How would you react in this situation? Well, notice it says about the disciples, And they were sore amazed within themselves beyond measure and wondered. In other words, they totally freaked out. They couldn't believe it. It's hard though, to imagine that they couldn't believe it, right? Because here they were with him all this time. What were they missing? What was the problem? Why is, did this account bother them or excite them or make them amazed about Christ? Was he not the Son of God? Didn't Jesus say you were the Son of God? Here's a clue. And Mark draws us into this. And maybe we've missed this. Notice 52. For they had considered not the miracle of the loaves, as their hearts were hardened. Interesting. So it says they were... And then he says, they had not considered something. What? Why? Why didn't they consider the miracle of the loaves? Were they not there? Jesus feeding 5,000 with bread and fish all these miracle after miracle took care of them hardening of the hearts 
could have been friends that they never meditated on what was going on. They didn't think about what was going on. That's what that word means, to consider, to think, to, to reason. Reason on what? The miracle of the lows. They hadn't taken time out of their busy, whatever else that was on their minds, <coughs> schedule, to consider, this is just amazing what just took place. Had they done so, they would not have freaked out seeing Jesus walk on water, right? They would have just thought, no, the Lord sent us away. He's got this covered. He's got our backs. We don't have to worry. we just got to go, right? We'll go. Whatever happens, we know that Lord will take care of us. And it's just, when I read this, I thought to myself, you know, this is life. If you're an unbeliever, here's the encouragement. In uh, the book of Hebrews, the warning is given to the Hebrews, don't harden your heart like the Israelites. See, the Jews in the first century, they had an issue about believing Jesus to be the Messiah and to be saved. Here in Hebrews, he's writing to the, the writers writing to, he, to the Jewish brethren, and some weren't believers as yet. They had experience or noticed um, associated with the believers but not had yet committed themselves to Christ not had yet believed in him and accepted him or received him and so if you're an unbeliever and you hear the gospel of God's grace and want to be saved be saved by believing wholeheartedly in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior that he died and was raised up on the third day accept him into your life and things will change. Your heart and heart, because this is the issue, will become a soft heart. Why? Because Ezekiel 36, 26 says that God removes a stony heart and puts in a heart of flesh. So these disciples had not yet accepted Christ Jesus as the Messiah. Yes, they were with him. Yes, they were following him around. But they weren't considering these things that were taking place. In fact, the day he died, they were scattered. They went back to their businesses, right? Because the indwelling spirit had not yet sealed them, not yet, that heart had not yet been removed, that stony heart. It is something of God. So what's the encouragement, friends, for, for us as believers? Sometimes in life we're facing a crisis of faith. Our response, I believe, should be to fix our eyes back on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, in the, back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Instead of allowing fear and doubt to um, overcome or to cripple us, not our heart as a believer, no, but our thoughts. That's why we're renewing our minds, right? And that's what the devil is after, is to uh, cripple our thoughts, <clears throat> Instead, we should look to Christ and trust Him and in His power because now we have a union with Him. He's in us and we're in Him. So we can now not look at the external but the internal and realize we have supernatural in us. And so therefore we don't have to be marveled but by being joyed, like have real joy and real peace and contentment in the midst of the storms of our life. Guys, we have it all in us as new covenant believers. What did the psalm say? Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. In the midst of life's storms, we can find solace in the unchanging character of our Lord Saviour, Jesus Christ and our Father. And their dead love, love for us. Developing a focus on Christ as the central figure in our lives, friends, enables us to confront the hardening of our thoughts, not our hearts. Our hearts won't be hardened, but our thoughts can be. As we anchor our faith in, our, in Him, then therefore we are empowered to navigate through the storms of life with courage and confidence knowing that he is always with us guiding us through every trial and tribulation 
So we might be going through something right now. You may be wondering, what am I to do here? You know, what should I do? The solution to that is ponder, consider what has happened to you as a child of God when you accepted Jesus. You became one with the Lord. You are in union with the Lord and with the Father. That's what Jesus said, right? We have a new spirit in us. The old spirit is dead. That heart of hardened heart of stone is removed. That doesn't exist anymore. We have a heart of flesh. Therefore, continue allowing our heart of flesh to um, look to the one that's in us. Look to Christ Jesus our Lord. And don't be so amazed. But be amazed, yes, that as we consider what's happened to us as a new creation in the new covenant, we can be wowed by that and live a life when these trials and uh, tribulations hit us and crisis and we're not sure what to do, we fix our eyes back on Christ. Guys, that was my message for the day. Have a great day.